Hello and welcome to Q&A Friday. My name is Jason New Land. Hello and welcome. Blimey, it's been cold the last couple of days. Cold. So please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. We have just a, a little bit of water. So, 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 so. I'll get all the so's out of the way. So, 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 so. Uh, thank you to Kara. A big thank you to Kara for your gift. Um, the Christmas trees. Christmas trees. And I want to say a big get well and hope you're okay to Molly and trying to think what else no that's that's it there might there's probably other stuff I should say now I haven't made a recording since Tuesday. And it's now Friday. It feels, it feels ages ago that I made a recording. It really does. It's been quite a full on week this week. I've been trying to, well there's there's two things going on this week really. There's the coursework for my open university course there was the deadline which was yesterday midday yesterday 21st of November and I didn't get it in on time I don't think so I was playing around with the system and I thought that it has a, a thing where you can upload a file to see, it's like, I thought it was just a test to see if it was correct or not, you know, correctly formatted and was a kind of a, like a mock, a mock way of finding out if it's kind of, you're on this, I was on the right path. And then it said, we've received your assignment, thank you. So I don't know if I've actually sent it in, the wrong thing. Or I've either sent in the wrong the wrong assignment <laughs> or the incomplete assignment or I haven't sent in anything. And I'm not sure which one of those it is. So I don't really know what's gonna happen there. I shall find out next week. The other thing is I've spent the last two or three days, at least two days, solidly dealing with debt people and going through my debts and trying to get help with that. So that's been two solid days of phone calls and form filling online, talking to people and... Oh, yeah, it's it's absolutely knackering. So I had two days of that. So really, in the first part of the week, I would say I probably spent avoiding anything but doing the coursework. You know, I suddenly became interested in <laughs> in trees. And I thought, 
maybe I should take up skydiving. And well, I wish I had a Lego set so I could build a build a big castle made of Lego. They're like, why? Anything to distract myself from the thing that I was supposed to be doing. So yeah, it's been a weird week. Weird week. The last two days have been very strange. I hope that the the results of those two days will be positive. I'll, I'll find out within five five days, five working days. So I'm hoping that by next Friday it will be complete, sorted. And I'm also been sort of trying to help another a neighbour out as well so she lost her internet having problems with the internet provider and I don't know lots of stuff like that so I, I was helping to get set up with another one and that took a while uh, uh, so I got that done today as well so I've saved her money plus it didn't cost her anything other than delivery for the first month and the uh, once she starts paying it's going to be it's like 19 pound a month for unlimited broadband so it's it's a good deal it's a black friday deal it just happened to coincide with i guess this is black friday is it today i don't know it's friday where does that term even come from black friday because I thought Black Friday was the Friday, the last Friday before Christmas. Because there's a, if you work in a nightclub, in like the, the leisure industry, you know, like nightclubs and pubs and stuff like that. That night, the Friday before Christmas, um... Or the last working day, before, you know, the last working Friday before Christmas is quite a, a chaotic night. It just happens to be the same, like, it's in the industry, I don't know if it's still the same, but in the industry that was just well known that that was a chaotic night. At least in London it was. I reckon it's the same everywhere. There's nothing special about London. It's, it's 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 probably the same every part of the country. Maybe the world even. Well, maybe not the world, but those that have kind of Christian or Christian like Christmas stuff, or maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. So that's what I've been doing. Ugh. I'm tired so tired <sighs> really tired so I'm gonna do the Q&A Friday dee -dee 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 -dee. put a bit of energy in let me guess, get myself energetic Vinny's happily chewing on a bone I've just had something to eat I've said a lasagna so that is, I feel a bit better having eaten. It was the first meal I've had for probably three days, so that's good. I've, I've still eaten, but it's just like breakfast cereal and stuff. So that was nice to actually have a cooked food. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So yeah. Now... There's, I've got a Facebook group and YouTube channel, but I can't even bother to really mention it. I just have mentioned it, but you know, there. Yeah. Tomorrow is the anniversary of my friend downstairs, for those that know about that. So maybe that's also part of the reason why I've been feeling a bit weird. It's 
like it was a Friday that I lost him and it was a Friday and it was like a day like today it's Friday and all day it's just been it's felt like it's a year today but it isn't but it's, it's a year tomorrow like exactly a year but it just one thirty in the afternoon but it's just weird it just felt all day like I don't know how to explain it it's just been strange it's strange I just can't believe a whole year has gone by very weird so I'll move on from that I won't get caught bunged up in that one What am I looking at? Where am I? Who am I? Here we are. So, Q&A Friday. Questions. I've only got four questions, so this won't be a like a seven hour recording like or last week. I'm a little bit bunged up today. Just It's just the weather. The weather change. I get like that sometimes. Right, here we go. Cindy asks me Hi Jason Would you please explain a couple of your English holidays um, Those of us in the USA are not familiar with um, So number one would be what is bank holiday Okay uh, And what is boxing day Inquiring Minds wants to know. Um, okay, uh, so I suppose from a, a, um, a English perspective, I mean, it might not just be America. It might there might be quite a few countries that don't celebrate. It's like, I suppose they have their own celebrations. I mean, I'm thinking of celebrations that America has that we don't have here. The main one, two, there's two that are big. And uh, the first one would be Thanksgiving. We don't have that in the UK. Although I think we should, because I think it's in a what an amazing out of all the out of all the Western names for a day, for a holiday, Thanksgiving. Giving thanks. Every day it should be that you know maybe not but you know what I mean it's it's like such it's the most positive holiday I can even imagine because everyone can get involved in it doesn't matter what your religion is doesn't matter what your belief system is doesn't matter where you were born in the world you can have, I know it's not celebrated in other countries but it's something you can get involved in it's I think it's lovely I don't know. I don't know how it originated. I might have to do that now, look. But I'd love it if we had Thanksgiving here. Because it's a beautiful thing, baby. I do actually genuinely think it's amazing. But I could never understand it as a kid. Like, it looks like Christmas. That's what I couldn't get. Like, you're celebrating Christmas in November. No, it's Thanksgiving. But it looks like Christmas. It's like the same get up, you know, the same big kind of family get together, food, and you know all the stuff like that. Maybe not presents. I don't know. I don't know if you have presents or if they have presents on the Thanksgiving. But yeah, so we don't have Thanksgiving here. I know that's not what you asked. You asked what do we have and what are they? So. But I'll just say there's the, few, the differences. So we don't have Thanksgiving. We don't have um, Independence Day either. 
So 4th of July, isn't it? So we don't have Independence Day because that'd be a bit weird because we'd be celebrating getting getting rid of ourselves, wouldn't we? <laughs> so, yeah, we don't have Independence Day. America is, Halloween is much bigger in America than here. Like some people, you know, go go all out on Halloween, but it's not the big occasion that it is in America. And I, I don't, maybe, well, this is based on what I see on television. Now, of course, what I see on television it, in sitcoms and in movies doesn't mean that's what America's like. Just in the same way as England isn't like quite often in the movies or on TV either. So if you come here, it's nothing like Downton Abbey. People won't be speaking like that. Uh, it's, you know what I mean? It's like, it's going to be different. You're going to have, I think the one of the things you're going to notice, if you come to England, the accents, literally you travel a few miles up the road and it's a different accent. It's kind of weird because it's a tiny country. This is absolutely, technically, if it was down to scale, England wouldn't even be on the map. You wouldn't be able to see it compared to the rest of the world. It would be, it's a dot, a dot on the landscape, as it were, because it's so small. But because we're probably the ones that created the map, I'm surprised we didn't make it bigger than the African continent. I'm surprised that England wasn't like, like that massive and everything else was like small around it. Like we were the sun. That's what I would have done. <laughs> so. Holidays. Also we have. We have the religious festivals. Now depends what religion you are. Depends on what religious festivals you get involved in. Now traditional. When I say traditional, I guess I'm talking Christian, but that's not the traditional British religion, Christianity, but it kind of has been for quite a while, quite a few thousand years, I guess. But you've got, nearly said so then, but you've got the main ones that is part of society like Chris, uh, Christmas Easter and that's it they're the, they're the two main ones and the schooling system the, everything is built around those things as far as it doesn't matter where you what religion you are you get that those days off. You get that period off. So, I mean, Easter's always on a Sunday anyway. But Christmas is always on the same day of the year. Someday in December. And... It's... Most places... I don't know what percentage of companies and businesses close on Christmas Day, but most... Of course, there's those that can't, like the hospitals, the emergency services. And one of the benefits we've had, this country's had from people coming from other countries with other religions, is some of those people are happy to open at Christmas because it's not their holiday. So, the, you know, Christmas Day, in the past, you couldn't get a takeaway. Well, you probably couldn't get a takeaway, but the only takeaways back then would have probably been, like, fish and chips and stuff. But now, there's a lot more. I think pubs are open, although I can remember when pubs were open when I was 18. They'd be open for a couple of hours, 
then they'd be open, I think, yeah, just for a few hours a day on Christmas. But most things kind of close. But if there's a grocery shop or like a, a news agent's and it's run by someone from a different faith, then they might be open. And that's handy, especially for people that want to go and get stuff. Want to, you want to buy stuff. You know, not, not everybody is into Christmas. I, I'm not. I've not really been, as an adult, I've not been so into it. When I was a kid, I loved Christmas. Loved it. My favourite time of year. My favourite day of the year. Christmas Day. Without doubt. No, there's no, no other day in the year compared. Maybe my birthday. Because it's the one thing I could never fault my dad and my stepmom on. Could never fault the the effort that they put in for Christmas and our birthdays. Like, it couldn't have been better anywhere else. The only way it could have been, I mean, if you go for, like, in a, in a material way, you could say, well, yeah, if, I was, if we were millionaires, we would have got more expensive presents. But we wouldn't have got more attention. We wouldn't have got more, it wouldn't have been not any nicer had we been rich than what it was. Because there was a whole, it was lovely. I mean, Christmas, blimey. So many presents. So many. And birthdays again. They used to wake us up like it we'd all get up because I had three brothers. And also we did the same thing for my dad, did the same thing for my stepmom. That's my first stepmom. So when it was someone's birthday, we'd all kind of arrange beforehand and we'd go downstairs, probably uh plan to like go into the room and We'll start singing happy birthday to the person and we'll take loads of presents in and it was yeah it was lovely and we did that for years there was an incident when I was about 14 didn't I forgot about it and the day before one of my friend's uncles managed to get us a uh it was a magazine that had Samantha Fox in it. And I was just reading a magazine. I forgot. Well, I, I'd, I'd been reading it. I fell asleep. And the next minute I know the room's full of my family. So, uh, you know, after that, there was a lot a lot more knocking on the door first. Before, before coming in. So... They said, uh, and then it was also like, well, we need to, you know, knock, knock, knock. Happy birthday, Jason, knock, knock. And I'll be shouting, come in. I said, okay, right, we'll wait then. No, no, come in. I said, okay. <laughs> but it was so amazing. It really was. It couldn't have been better. And i tell you why it was probably better is because I hadn't had birthdays before that. Before I was, the first time I had a birthday was when I was seven. Like, in my memory. But not just in my memory, but uh, as far as being aware of it. The time, I remember I had a, when I was in the kids' home in Newcastle, I woke up, come downstairs to go to her son to eat. And I still remember that room. And this, it was nice, I liked that room. I don't know why, but it was very bright. Lots of like lights or windows around, almost like a big conservatory. But I don't know if conservatories existed back then. Or they might not have been called that. As so I'm sitting there, I come down, I've got my orange juice and it was, it was like a canteen really, because there was quite a few kids, a big, big building there was no one else around so I don't know if I was either early or late probably late getting up and someone came and said to me oh your mum was here I said uh -huh. 
said your mum was here. Like my mum mum. The, uh, you know, the the portal of which I arrived. <laughs> my mama. And I said, all right, oh, where is she? Oh, she didn't didn't stay. I said, okay. And he said, she's given this for you. And it was a box of Maltesers. Now, I don't know if it was wrapped. It might have been wrapped. I don't know. I can't remember. I don't think it was wrapped. but it don't, Not that that makes any difference. But, but it was a box of Maltesers. So not just a little bag. A box. And I've always loved Maltesers. I still do. I don't eat them anymore because... Man. That is my favourite chocolate. Maltesers. Yeah. There's an emotional connection with Maltesers. And there's an emotional connection with Coke as well. Both to do with the children's homes, which is weird. The Coke, can of Coke, that was when I went from the... Because this is a Newcastle children's home when I had the Maltesers. When I moved to the South End Nazareth House children's home with my Mr. Wright, who's my social worker, we... I still can't remember if there's anyone with us. I don't remember my brothers being with me. But we did both live at both the places, so I don't don't understand what happened there. When I got to the children's home in South End, took me to my bed where I was gonna be sleeping in a dormitory. And I remember I think there was uh, like a wardrobe. I'm sure there was a window. There was a window, didn't have bars, but there's a window with a like a windowsill or whatever and I think Mr Wright said she said oh I'll show you around and Mr Wright said well don't you put that on the on the top because I had a can of coke but I'd not opened it yet I think he'd probably got it from the train station for me or something South End train station which was only a short distance really to the to the place so he said well just put it on the windowsill and we'll come and get it later and the lady wasn't a nun, I don't think. It was a maybe a helper or, or one of the carers. I don't know. She said, uh, I wouldn't wouldn't leave it there. Someone will steal it. And she laughed. So I laughed. After getting back from the tour, it was gone. Someone had stolen it. So that was a bit, uh, a, bit of a weird start. So I loved Coca-Cola. I love Maltesers. Ironically, they're both red. It's weird. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But I don't have either of those things anymore. <laughs> what was my point? Christmas, Easter, birthdays. Yeah, that's the first time I knew what a birthday was. I didn't know what a birthday was. So I would have been... Back then I was probably five, maybe. Maybe six. Five or six. So happy birthday. Like, okay. What's that? I didn't know what a birthday was. So, or I didn't understand what a birthday was. But by six you normally know, wouldn't you, I think. But the first time I actually had a birthday birthday was when I was seven. When I hit seven. In 1977. And, yeah, I liked it. Oh, yes. I really did. I think I got a bike for my birthday. And it was the first bike I ever had. So I'd never, I'd never ridden a bike. I had to learn to ride it at seven. I've never had one before. It was just like, wow. Kept falling off. It's, uh... I remember saying to my dad, like... Do you enjoy teaching me to ride a bike? He said, yes. I said, well, what do you enjoy the most, Daddy? He said, I like it when you fall off. <laughs> so, he laughed, so I figured he was being serious. So... I don't know what 
um, holidays. We have bank holidays. I never really understood why, to be honest with you. Um, I asked my granddad once about about Boxing Day, which is the day just after Christmas Day. So the only two, the three main holidays, really, or the ones that are almost set in stone, your Easter, your Good Friday, which is the day before Easter. So, no, Friday is the day, is the Friday before Easter. So that was supposed to be the day that Jesus passed away. And then two days later, Jesus rose. So Friday was his passing and Saturday was him coming back to life. And, but no one recognized him, did they, in the Bible? No one, rec even though he was going up to hear people, they didn't know who he was. It's quite, um, well, I just remembered that. So that, that's a, a it's, I mean, that's a proper religious holiday. I know Christmas is as well, but I think um, I would say that Easter is quite big for Christians, probably the bigger holiday for Christians in a sense of what Christianity is about. It's not really about the birth of Jesus, it's about, you know, the ending almost. And it's about his life obviously as well and but it's it's like Jesus died for our sins, kind of was reborn and all all that stuff. So and because there's quite a few days involved in that period and I guess it's the same maybe in America as well. You have Easter in America. I guess I don't know. I'm pretty sure you do. You do that that they do got to remember not everyone listening to this is from all over the place so yeah Easter I don't know what other countries celebrate Easter I'm pretty sure there's countries that don't and then you've got we've got pancake day now it's a holiday it's not a holiday but it's a it's a, it's a day Shrove Tuesday again it's a religious thing so we celebrate that by having pancakes, which is just batter and I don't know what else, fried, and they are tasty, tasty. Oh man, love them. I haven't had a pancake probably for 30 years, so it'd be nice to have one one day. Maybe I'll just get with some batter mix. I mean batter mix, not not for the euphemism, I mean actually batter mix. Maybe that would work. It might, then, I don't know if you can get ones that you could just add water or milk and stick it in a microwave. <gasps> that might be a way to do it. Ah, I might look into that, you know. I've never been so excited. Ooh. The next thing, so as you start the year in the UK, Starting the year, there's, of course, there's New Year's Day. New Year's Day is the first celebration of the year. And that's a national holiday. The New Year's Eve, because as far as I'm concerned, New Year's Day doesn't start till you wake up the next day. Like Saturday, tomorrow... It doesn't start at one minute past midnight for me. I know it does technically, but for me, you know, I, I class it. We well, do. I think everyone's the same, aren't they? Saturday starts when you wake up on Saturday morning, or Saturday afternoon, or Saturday evening, whenever it is you wake up. That's when Saturday starts. So the only day of the year when that's not the case well, it's two days I guess one would be perhaps your birthday you know some people like they say yep two more minutes and I'll be whatever age 21 and there probably are people that actually you know they're waiting outside a nightclub 
waiting to hit the correct age so they can enter the nightclub. But they have to wait so they can't go in until one minute past midnight. I mean, in this country, I mean, again, it might be, this, might be the same in other countries. No one generally waits. Well, they didn't when I was a kid. We didn't wait to be 18 to go into nightclubs. I was going in at 16. And I didn't look 18. I didn't even look 16 when I was 16. I, honestly, when I was 16, I didn't look more than about 14. But that's why I look so young now. <laughs> so New Year's Eve, it starts off, but New Year's Eve is not, it, although it's a celebration, it's not a holiday. So, you know, so people, lots of people work New Year's Eve. They might work during the day and then go out in the evening. But it's not a holiday, unless it falls perhaps on a Sunday. Then, you know, or Saturday, then it's kind of a day off. But New Year's Eve isn't a day off. It's just a normal working day. New Year's Eve Eve, all celebration. And New Year's Day, that's the beginning of the year. For a lot of people, that's recovering from New Year's Eve. It's it's quite a big celebration in this country. New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So, well, what I, I don't do it anymore, but when I was younger, we basically had the equivalent of Christmas again on New Year's Day. So it was a big roast dinner. Uh, there'd be lots of like family and whatever people around. And I think some people, I don't know if we did it, but some people have, yeah, that's it. We used to get the presents off the Christmas tree. So we'd all have the presents Christmas Day, which were the, Christ, the presents that were under the Christmas tree. But on the, on, uh, what's it, um, New Year's Day, we'd open the presents off the Christmas tree. So it was just another little, another little bit of tinsel added on, you know, so it's nice. So after New Year's Day, nothing. <laughs> it's, it's uh, your January and there's nothing all the way through January. There's nothing all the way through February. I think that's what makes maybe the the winter quite difficult because January and February, they're very long months. And it's the coldest months of the year potentially, and there's not a lot going on. I'm not. I'm not really. Uh, doesn't sound very positive, does it? But there's not a lot as far as public celebrations. It might be a brilliant month. You know, for people who've got birthdays, they might have multiple birthdays in January and February. So it could be a really good month. And it's whatever you make of it, I guess. But there's not a lot as far as public celebrations that I can think of. And then you've got March. Now, I don't know when mothers and... F We've also, we do also have Mother's and Father's Day. So I don't know when they are. Let me have a look. Mother's Day UK. So that's in March. And there's no, no Child's Day. No Son's Day or Daughter's Day. Father's Day. That's in June. Okay. So you got Father's Day in June. We'll just put that aside. But I might not remember it. And Mother's Day in March. So really the first... And they're not bank holidays. So they're not something that you can have time off work for. Unless you book it ahead of time. So... I'm just having a quick look to see what the bank holidays are. Uh, 
so these this year the bank holidays in this country New Year's Day so that is classed as a bank holiday Good Friday is also a bank holiday Easter Day because it's always a Sunday it's not a bank holiday for it to be a bank holiday it has to be on what they would class a working day Monday to Friday even though millions of people work at the weekends I know so Good Friday Easter Monday so if you do have your weekends off that's a good time because you get four days off in a row Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday if you're really organised and you get all your all, all your holidays in on time, you could technically uh, get over a week off by you know getting um, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday off before that. So you end up getting Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, which is blimey. It's quite a long time, isn't it? I never managed to do that because that, that was too much, uh, too much work. Although I remember when I worked in a call centre, people would literally turn up the very first day of the year, of the working day of the year, with a piece of paper with all their holidays, and it'd be queuing at the HR to book their holidays. Or they'd be going online to fill in the form or whatever, and just. Uh, I suppose they're the people that would queue for tickets to a show. They'd queue outside for like three days, even though they probably could just get the tickets by phoning up, maybe, or. Yeah, you know, I've seen people. I know some people do it because it's fun and it's a, it's a big getting together and stuff. I never really understood it why anyone would want to sleep outside, waiting in a queue to buy tickets at a box office for a show that's not going to be happening for maybe six, seven months why they would do it especially when the person that's on isn't necessarily well, I don't know like, like a huge star to them it he is or she is but I didn't understand it until I auditioned for the X Factor and I bet you're wondering where I'm going with this and then I became a huge star and I saw all these people queuing to see me. <laughs> no. I turned up at the X Factor. It was 2005. And I went to London. It was at the... It was a football ground. Huge Chelsea. Was it Chelsea football ground? It was a huge football ground anyway. Well, all football grounds are big, aren't they? But was it in London? I think it was Chelsea. And I was probably the third person to get there. I got there probably about one o'clock in the afternoon. And the gates were opening at, I think, 10 o'clock the next day. Maybe nine o'clock. And that's when people were going to get auditioned. So I got there, there was about three people before me. Now, if anyone ever plans to do that, don't bother. I mean, it's fun, it was fun, but outside of that, what happened is people were just walking in at 10, 9 o'clock and they managed to get near the gates. So when the gates got opened, they they got in. I mean, there's about 10,000 people, if not more, waiting, queuing 
so I did get in the front row on the stadium like, and it was about, it was one of those things where you just a few people just walk down in front of us so sing and they give you a a yes or a no mine was a no mine was a hard no and I realised then that anyone now I'm going to be I'm going to generalise here but I'm pretty sure that anyone that gets through to that through the competition to be on television even in the first you know just the first auditions everyone that gets through those didn't spend all night outside camping and wet you know and part of the reason I think that whether it's true or not and I'm talking about the good singers is because being up all night out in the cold and even though it's summer still cold you know it was, it was probably yeah it was possibly May time maybe it was September but it was cold it wasn't warm at night and all the chatting and talking and all the stuff like that my voice was a bit gone and I'm not saying that even if I'd turned up in a private jet and had like little angels massaging my throat that I would have done any better but I probably would have done better I'm, I'm, I'm well there's a yes or a no isn't it so I might still have got a no however I might have felt a little bit better within myself and I'll probably do better now because I'm so old they might feel sorry for me <laughs> oh although it's not on anymore so it doesn't matter that was weird because I remember I was coming out of there and there was a security guard and saying a security guard was stopping his car saying hello and uh have you got any ID? And a bloke that was driving the car saying, Yeah, it's Louis. I'm on the show. And the security guard like was confused. It was funny. So that made up for a little bit. No, it didn't. No, it was the experience was really good. It was. The experience was fun the whole kind of camaraderie and sticking around talking to people and there was a hotel that let us use the facilities that, which was next door so anyone needed to go to the toilet or needed to get something to eat something to drink they could go in there and we all made sure we people didn't lose their place and there was a couple of people that came that were troublemakers and they got kicked out it was weird it's like the whole mob turned on them and they left because they turned up drunk and they were trying to cause trouble thinking that they could kind of pick on individual people but at that point there was probably because it was quite late at night so they might have been just drunk people just generally walking around drunk like locals or something but the uh there was at least a hundred, maybe two hundred of us by then. And they just, they were trying to intimidate individuals, but they ended up getting intimidated and they left. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, it was quite funny to watch. So it's, it was, a, it was a nice, I mean, it wasn't, nothing bad happened, but it was really great atmosphere so I kind of do know why people would wait outside for tickets because maybe if because there's, there's some there's some people like artists that would come to a town and they might come once a year and they travel around and they tour and they've got 
such a fan base, loyal fan base that they're gonna want to be, they're gonna sell out the show every time, and they'll just do one show in that theatre per year. So I guess they get to know each other, don't they? The the audience members, if they're going every year for ten years or whatever they'll start to kind of and I suppose fan clubs and stuff especially now with the internet I say now with the internet the internet's been around for like 30 years in this country well 20 over 25 years since 97 in this country it's been active it's been around longer than that but and I talk about it's weird now ever since the internet now we've got the internet don't say that about mobile phones, do we? Now we've got mobile phones. I, mean, I, can't, I can hardly remember using the landline phone. I remember, one thing I remember used to, you know you'd be on a, have a phone conversation sitting on the stairs. For some reason the phone was always at the bottom of the stairs on some kind of cabinet in people's houses. They're often a place to have it, near the front door. It's almost like, well, if you're upstairs or if you're downstairs, it's the same kind of distance. This. And you sit on the stairs having a phone call and there'd be that like, oh, you hang up. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. And remember that? Yeah, it's been a while. They always hung up first. I'm phoning back. So what'd you do? What'd you do that for? Well, you said hang off first. I said, I know, but I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I want to have another hour's conversation about, you know, how I don't want you to hang up. So, yeah. Um, and then after about three hours of talking, absolute nonsense. Hard to believe that I could ever do that. I know. The phone would be tangled. So you just hold it and you you let go of the receiver, the handheld thing, and let it like spin round and untangle itself. How did it get tangled? I haven't moved from the seat. I've been on the same step, just changing weight from different buttocks, you know, to give the other buttock and obviously have a little bit of air out every now and then. How did it get tangled? Those were the days. I can't even remember the last time I used a, a landline phone. Landline phone. Especially the ones that are the rotaries. You know, the, the, you dial the number. I was like, wow. But I remember it. And it'd like spin back. Wow. It's a long time ago. The thing is, with mobile phones, the good thing about landlines is you could tell when someone's hung up on you. But with mobile phones, you can't. There's no beep, 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 or beep, beep, or do. It's none of that stuff. So, it's really... Because I know there's the old cliche of people sometimes, because, you know, when phones first came out, mobile phones were first popular, like before they were popular, when the only people that used to carry them around were, like, really wealthy show-offs and drug dealers. They were the only ones that really seemed to have mobile phones back then. <laughs> and people working in the city and stuff like that you know before they were because there was a time when they were not they were not financially viable they were so super expensive and then they become they were still expensive but they became more available and it seems the the younger generation like it was often the way were the ones that were starting to use them more as in probably any for any new technology, I guess. Maybe not every new technology. There must be stuff that's invented that 
elderly people use that young people don't use? There must be. There must be. Something just flown, just jumped off a of video onto my arm. That was weird. Oh well. It's just a flea. It's not a flea because I've not been bitten. Fleas bite his things. I think it's maybe just a little insect. Well, it was definitely a little insect. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, got distracted. That's unlike me. I was doing so well sticking to the subject. Yeah, I think students, they were the first ones for the mobile phone companies to experiment on. That's like a social thing, social experiment. See if they'll take to it. And I was dating a student in about, what, 96. And she she got given a mobile phone contract. And I think she was 17. Just, it was just before her 18th birthday. So she was 17 and they gave her a mobile phone. She was a student nurse. So she had no credit check, no credit ratings. But they wanted, they were desperate to get people signed up for a month, uh, for a year or for whatever. And they'd give away free phones and in 90, no, 2001, I actually had a job doing that, phoning people up, cold calling them and trying to convince them to take a mobile phone contract, but they get a free phone, like the latest mobile phone free. And it seems almost ridiculous that people would need to be talked into that because it was a really good deal. But at the same time, it wasn't normal. It wasn't something that was... I mean, it was... A lot of people, I think, that got the contracts would get the... Was it one-to-one? -one? And they one to one I think they were the first people big mobile phone companies in the country in this country one to one is it one to one blimey that's my memory one to one and they had this offer it's a contract I don't know if they had a mobile phone come with it but they had this offer where it was unlimited calls to anyone all part of the package so for a monthly fee of probably 20 quid a month or whatever it was 10 quid a month I can't remember unlimited texts unlimited calls and people were hammering it and they started asking they started wanting to buy the contracts back because Back then, most most people still were having to pay as you go because it was expensive. But at the same time, you could get a mobile phone. It was all about getting people to get a mobile phone. Really, you, I could I could go and get a mobile phone from the mobile shop, and for probably forty pound. And have thirty pound of credit. It's just ridiculous, but that was it, it's how it's how they get you. It's how they get you. And the credit was pay as you go credit, and didn't last long. It was like ten pence a minute or something like that. Ridiculous. It was wow. Those were the days, the amount of times, probably hundreds of times in the 90s, like from 97 to 2000 and I had page, I didn't get my first page ago till 2001. That was when I was working for the company, so I got one with them. 
when I was working. They weren't orange, but they were working for orange. And orange is now... What is orange? Is it O2 now? Orange. E, no, E, E, E. Orange is now E, E. So I was with Orange. I was with them. That was the first phone contract I had. And before that, it was all pay as you go. Constantly running out. And they wanted to give it to young people. They wanted young people using them. Because young people like to chat. They like to talk to each other. You know, people dating on the phone, talking to each other and stuff. And it's it's almost like we were being trained. And I, I guess I'm not, I wasn't really young even then, was I? You know, late tw late 20s, but younger than I am now. But back then, you didn't see kids with phones. You did, because they weren't cheap. It's not that they were expensive to buy. Like, the, you could get cheap phones. But to maintain them, to pay for the credit, you needed to have money coming in. I think the first phone I bought was over £100. I think it might have been £140, or was it 80 And that was in 97. Yeah, it was about the, the end of 97, maybe the early 98. So I bought a phone... And it had a, an aerial, which I used to like to. I used to like to put my teeth in between the top of the aerial and just let it drop down. I don't know why. It's one of those things I used to do. A mobile phone with an aerial, blimey! It wasn't top notch. It wasn't the most. <laughs> it was expensive, but it wasn't. Um, yeah, I think my favourite one in the nineties was an Ericsson. And it was a flip one, and it just reminded me a little bit of uh, Star Trek. I quite like that. But there was one really embarrassing moment when I I was talking to somebody on a on a bus. Yeah, I was. It was quite a busy bus, so I think someone. I was just talking to. I was talking to him. At the bus stop, and then they get on the bus. It was an important phone call, maybe I don't know, but I was sitting down. I'm talking, and I'm probably talking a bit louder than I need to. I was a bit. I was a cliche. I was a bit of a cliche. Well, I'm still talking, and the phone rings. Now, I didn't. There's no way of knowing that someone's hung up, because it doesn't go beep 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 or dee like that and they rung me back and I was so embarrassed I heard a couple of people laugh like as if I it's almost like I was pretending to be talking to someone on the phone and I was no I wasn't I wasn't I generally wasn't not that time although I'm pretty sure someone got on the bus and they were having a conversation and they weren't talking to anyone because they were talking loudly, but I think they were talking to themselves, but using the phone to cover it up. It was the conversation was too weird. But it might not be true. I don't know. So, yeah, about holidays. Bank holidays, we've got Good Friday, Easter Monday, early May Day. So these are the bank holidays. So you've got New Year's Day. Good Friday, Easter Monday. So Good Friday is two days for Easter, and then Easter Monday is the day after Easter, Sunday. Saturday is not a bank holiday. And Sunday is Easter. So it's not technically a bank holiday either, which is weird. you think it would be, wouldn't you, considering that's the main well, kind of the main day. Some would say Good Friday, some would, you know, but then you got the, I didn't know it's called early, but you got May Day bank holiday, the early one. So there's two, two bank holidays in May, one at the beginning, one at the end. 
and that's uh, usually all our bank holidays are Mondays. So if it says bank holiday, it's a Monday. We have two in May, one at the beginning, one at the end. Then we have the summer bank holiday, which is, oh, this year was on my birthday. So next year it'll probably be the year, probably the day after my birthday, maybe. So that's one of the good things about having my birthday at the end of August is often my birthday is over the bank holiday weekend. It falls on either the Saturday, Sunday or Monday. I guess it's just that that's out of seven days. So every out of, out of seven years, three of those years, my birthday will actually be on a bank holiday weekend. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And then that's at the end of August. So that's the last bank holiday of the year, as far as Mondays go. And then there's Christmas Day, 25th of the... And that's uh, whatever day of the week that's, that lands on. So you've got Christmas Eve. It's not a bank holiday. It's celebrated by a lot of people, but it's not a bank holiday. So people don't generally get that time off work. Christmas Day is a bank holiday and then you've got Boxing Day is a bank holiday and then that's it so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight bank holidays or eight days where if you're working you get that day off or or obviously some people can't have that day off because of what they're doing, the job they're doing. They can't close the hospitals or um, you know, important places like that or off licenses. <laughs> it's you know, it's so some people work, but generally the country kind of shuts down a little bit, uh, especially Boxing Day, Christmas Day, and New Year's Day. And possibly Easter as well. They're, they're the four where there might not be anything happening. So, for example, if I was to go to my dad's Christmas Eve. And I wanted to spend Christmas Day with him. I'd be way out of luck because he's going away for Christmas this year. And also, I can't take Vinny with me. So, I can't do it anyway. But I'm just saying if I was to go there. Because I have in the past, many times. I've gone there Christmas Eve. I can't leave till the day after Boxing Day because there's no public transport. I'm literally stuck there. And I think there's been occasions where my dad's decided to bring me home. I think he's got fed up with me, so he's driven me back. But generally, it's just everything closes no trains, no buses. I mean, I live on a near, not far from, a really busy road which leads to one of the busiest motorways in the country. I mean, let's say I think all the motorways are probably huge, but my one's massive, really. It's not a, It's not that it's a big motorway, but it's super busy because it, it kind of leads from London or leads to London and from London. And it spreads, I think it goes all the way up north. So it's a big, and then there's another part. So yeah, it's a really, really busy, constantly, like 24 hours a day. But the road leading up to the motorway is also really busy. There's times when it's a little bit quieter in the evening. It's a little bit quieter, just like the motorway is a bit quieter in the evening. Still, still busy, but not like it is during the day, generally. Apart from maybe in the summer when people are on the way to go on holiday, I guess there's a lot of people travel maybe overnight. Maybe I, I don't know. I know it might be it might be true. I'm not sure. 
but the main road that leads to the motorway on Christmas Day, quiet. Because the petrol station's open, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, I think it is, I think it's open every day. I'm pretty sure it is. And I go in, yeah, I've gone in now, pretty, yeah, I'm pretty certain it's open all through Christmas. Then you can walk through the, you can walk down the road and there's no one about. It's a little bit like when it snows and people can't drive around anymore. So, you know, it's, it kind of, there's some roads where people just don't, they don't use it anymore. The motorways, you can, in, when it's snowing, the, the motorways don't really get blocked, do they? Because of the, I mean, I'm just, I know they can get blocked, but generally, because of the continuous movement on the roads, it's hard for the snow to settle. But on this road, which is quite busy up the road from where I am, it gets, when it snows, it can, if, it, if it's snowing quite hard, especially overnight, it'll block the road. I don't know if I've answered your question in the best way possible. I have tried, I genuinely have tried, but it's, um, I have to try and figure out, if I have to go back, so I come out of that, so let me go back into the page. Any questions? Okay, here we go. So that's why I said I've only got four, so it'll be quite a short recording. What is Boxing Day? I asked my nan that, not my nan, my granddad that. That was, I know I've had three conversations with him. I had, uh, yeah, I had three conversations that I remember. No, four. There's one conversation I had with my granddad about boxing, and it was Frank Bruno fighting Mike Tyson in 19... 1989. And I spoke. I asked my granddad what he thought because my granddad used to be a boxer, and we had a conversation about it. But I think I remember saying to my granddad, "Who do you think is going to win out of um, Cause, yeah, I was eating. I went in there. I think my nan was not very well, so she was in bed, and I came in, and he made me a sandwich." And a cup of tea. And I said to him, oh, and he was standing there, standing at the sink, leaning against the sink. I said, uh, Granddad? I didn't. I said, uh, who do you think is going to win out of the Frank Bruno and, um, against, you know, Bruno against uh, Tyson? And my granddad said to me, I'll always remember this, he said, have you finished your sandwich yet? I said, no, I'm still eating it. He said, well, can you, can you hurry up? And I realised at that point that he wanted me to leave. <laughs> so, yeah, it was quite a short conversation. But I don't, that was about all I remember talking about that. And then he... That's in the days when I used to believe that there was such a thing as being invincible. I believed that Mike Tyson was invincible. Because at the time, he almost kind of came across as he was like no one could do anything but at the same time even knowing that Frank Bruno wasn't invincible because he'd lost twice already previous to fighting Mike Tyson the first time he was still my hero so I was very conflicted because I adored Frank Bruno from I grew up watching him on TV, like early 80s. He was a celebrity. He was the only outside of... Um, oh, blimey. Henry Cooper. Henry Cooper was the only boxer. Now, Henry Cooper and Barry McGuigan. 
they were the two most famous boxers that I'd ever really heard. That they were they were superstars in the UK. Henry Cooper, more from the sixties and seventies. Bam McGuigan from the early eighties. And then Frank Bruno also from the early eighties onwards. So he, but he was doing lots of TV stuff. You know the sort of the Saturday night family entertainment shows. He'd be on there, and so I loved the boxing he did, but also as a person, he just he was a he was a national hero. He was. It's it. Anyone that was around in those times can't really argue that one because he was genuinely a huge star. He still is. He still always will be in my heart. And he's not around so much these days, but a lot of people aren't around like, TV and stuff. You know, they, they did their time and he's enjoying his retirement, hopefully. Although I think he does have a charity, a gym that's... Uh, raises money for mental health welfare and it's in Essex somewhere but it's, I don't really know whereabouts it is and then I had a conversation with my dad my granddad about politics and I think this was the one leading up to the 1980 19 88 election or 1987 election I think it was 1988 election and we had a conversation about that and I know that I can't remember what he said and then we had a, a conversation when I moved into my flat above the ship shop my granddad called me into the into the shed. And I'm thinking, well, it's a bit late now to teach me how to box. I'm 16 now. And he said, no. I thought, well, it's not enough of that boxing. I said, okay. And I discovered, I didn't know anything about my granddad. I knew he was a boxer. Well, he used to be a boxer. Like when he was, he was a boxer as a kid. And then he went to the army and he was a boxing champion in the army. So I know I'll probably talk about it a bit, but I'm a I'm a lover of boxing. So to have a my granddad who was a boxing champion is pretty cool. So to me, it's it's pretty groovy, and it was also a hero as well. Like a as was pretty much anyone that was that went to fight for this country. So he took me into the shed. I knew he liked gardening. I underestimated his like he loved gardening, and I think that was the thing that he was most happy with. But he also liked to make things out of wood, and he was very good at crafts. Not crafts, that's a dog show. Crafts, as in, well, maybe maybe not crafts. He was, he was, he w he worked with wood. So in my nan and granddad's house, there was a clock with a wooden frame. And there was a kitchen roll holder, which he made. There was all kinds of things that he made that were in the house, made of wood. So he's very, very talented at stuff like that. And when it came to gardening, I just thought, well, you plant seeds and you just got to make sure you weed them and that's it. But there's a little bit more to it than that, apparently. And again, something happened that I didn't appreciate at the time. Genuinely. I didn't appreciate it. And I should have... It's almost like I was being given an opportunity to one thing is to get close to my granddad. So I didn't take that opportunity. It's the only time he ever reached out to me. Like, one-on-one. -on -one. I don't think I'd ever had a conversation with him just on his own. Apart from when he had made that sandwich for me. 
because without I don't mean it horribly but I would visit my nan and he would be there when I was old enough to visit on my own and it was I just didn't have a relationship with him which is a shame because I had huge respect for him and he was one of these silent uh, quiet serious gentle but firm people didn't say much but when he did you kind of listen you know it's that kind of one of them and so he was he was a good man I think he was anyway we went into this shed and there was all these things I couldn't believe what I saw I couldn't honestly I can't believe what I saw then and I can't believe now what happened next. He had a gift for me. For my flat, moving into my flat. A bonsai tree. Okay. Right, if you know anything about my history, previous to that time, you know, in my teen years, I was the karate kid. I wasn't the karate, I wasn't the karate kid in the film, obviously, but although I was pretty much the same age, I was obsessed with martial arts. You pretty much from a from a very early age. You know, Kung Fu was on TV, the late seventies, so right, right from an early age, I loved Kung Fu. I was always practicing kicking and punching and stuff. I didn't know what I was doing. But when if you if you was in the eighties, if you did martial arts, there was a bought before and after period. So there was before the Karate Kid and after the Karate Kid movie. Before the Karate Kid, Enter the Dragon. That was the movie. It still is the most important martial arts movie ever made I would argue and probably anyone in the martial arts world would probably agree as far as the movie that's had the most effect upon the world in martial arts wise there's loads of other movies also have as well but Enter the Dragon was anyone that went on to become a martial arts movie star would have been obsessed with Enter the Dragon I'm pretty certain so Van Damme, people like Dolph Lundgren, um, Jackie Chan, all those people. Although Jackie Chan was actually in the Into the Dragon, so he might not have been obsessed with Bruce Lee because he was already kind of doing his own thing anyway. Did you know Bruce Lee was a child star? As was Jackie Chan. Did you know that? Yeah. He was in movies for, as a kid for years and years in China. So there's my dad, there's my granddad giving me a bonsai tree. If you've seen the Karate Kid movie, you know what I'm talking about now. Mr. Ma, Mr. Mag, Maggie, Madagi, Magad, whatever, grew bonsai trees and he gave. The Karate Kid, a bonsai tree. Daniel's son, Daniel son, a bonsai tree. And that was part of, you know, that was the thing, isn't it? That was the, what he did. So my granddad was Mr. Mazaki, Magassi. I was Mr. I was Mr. Magassi, still am, but he was Mr. Masasi. Mas, Magassi, Mazagi. So all along, my granddad was Mr. Mizagi. He was the bonsai tree grower, and I had no idea. I didn't find this out until I was 16. And you may say, well, it's, it's only a few years after you start doing karate, which is true. But when you're 16, three years is a long time. It is. Three years is a heck of a long time. 
it's a fifth of your life or whatever. So it's quite a long time. And I took it home and I didn't look after it. And it withered away. So instead of seeing someone that I could look up to, I did look after my, I did look up to him anyway, but to see someone that maybe could have been a guide, more of a guide in my life, like my granddad, that was an opportunity for me and him to, it's almost like maybe he was reaching out to me, it's like giving me something that was precious to him. And I did appreciate the moment, but I just, I was 16. I just, I, I, at the time, I was very, I was very immature for 16. You know, I was more like 12, 13. Seriously, I was just, I'm about 17 now. Mentally, I think, if that. So then, it's just weird. You think about the comparisons like Karate Kid. I was into karate. And then my granddad grows bonsai trees, and I didn't know. Mr. Mizagi grew bonsai trees. My granddad was like a boxing champion. I did know about that, but I didn't know how good he was. It's only after he passed away, my nan got all his stuff out, showed me his medals, his trophies, pictures of him, like, before the army, and then during the army. So it wasn't just during the army, he was a boxer. And he he didn't do it once he left, once he left, once because the war finished and that was it. So he didn't do boxing anymore, as far as I know. I was like, wow, he was really, he could have potentially gone on to be world champion if he'd have, if the, if the situations was right, you know, in a sense of if, if he'd had the opportunities, they, they weren't available to him because he had a family and he, he had to, he had to work to support the family, to raise the family. But if he'd have been like a single man, he might have been able to but then he was quite old I don't mean when he gave me the the bonsai tree because he he was 76 at that time but when he left the army he was 20 I think he was 28 so he'd served 12 years and then a year later the Second World War started, so he was back in the army for another five years. Or six years, sorry, six years. So he he didn't get a chance. I mean, I suppose technically 20, 28 is not that old. He could have perhaps turned professional as a boxer. Maybe he even thought about doing it, I don't know. I really don't know. It's too late now to ask my nan. I did. I got so many questions. Yeah. So Boxing Day, when I did speak to my granddad about that, he said that was a day where people used to just get rid of their <laughs> get rid of their boxes from all the wrapping up. That's my memory, but I don't know. I've heard a couple of different things. Something to do is for... It wasn't about boxing the sport. But it had something to do with sport. But not boxing. The, not the sport boxing. If you can hear me tapping away on my phone. It's not because I'm trying to check out what it means. <laughs> uh, so... Boxing Day was once a day to donate gifts to those in need, but has evolved to become part of Christmas festivities. Cool, okay. Um, that's probably what my granddad told me. Probably, I don't know. 
but that I I've, I've in my memory it was something to do with um boxes. <laughs> I don't know why. I hope that I answered your question, Cindy. Uh, the next question is from Anne Free. How do you normally travel by train? How do you normally travel by train or car? It depends. Tra I used to travel by train. I used to travel by bus. These days, the taxi. I, don't, I mean, I don't go out too much, but when I need to, it's more than likely going to be a taxi so yeah that's quite a short answer to that question I'm afraid um, yeah I don't the last time I saw my dad I travelled by taxi to see him but I hadn't seen all the family together since uh, until this year for five years so it was the first time I'd seen my little brother for five years and my sister and my brother. I mean, it's crazy. It's just like, it was 2019. Literally for the same celebration. So it was my stepmom's birthday. It was a 60th birthday party, 2019. And then I went to a 65th birthday party. Five years, bang, gone like that. So I wasn't going to go because I couldn't face the travel in. I couldn't just, I wasn't up to it. And I just thought, well, I'll get a taxi. That's the only way I could do it. So yeah, I get a taxi. That's pretty much my main way of traveling these days. I'm not, I don't use a lot of taxis because they're too expensive. But when I need to go somewhere, uh, for example, I've got a dentist appointment next month. I'll be getting a taxi there. Otherwise, I won't get there. Last time, I had to cancel because I couldn't face going. And it wasn't even just a dentist, it was just the travelling. So, I got this time, I'm going to book the taxi. Not only am I going to book a taxi, I'm going to take a neighbour who needs to go into town anyway. I'm going to take him with me, which will force me to go. Because he'll be depending on me to give him a lift. So I've kind of organised it. Pushed myself into a corner to do it. So on that day. I've already spoke to my neighbour. I said look. Because he, he goes into town every day. On the bus. So I said what I'll do. And it's cold in here. Which means it must really be cold outside. Or the heating's broke. Oh my goodness. The window's open. But it's not normally this cold in here. It's usually a bit stuffy. Oh no. So normally by yeah, now it is And I, I didn't I couldn't even get myself a bus pass because it didn't have the right information on the letter. But I rarely use a bus. I did use a bus the other day though, but I had a, a neighbour come with me. And I went, yeah, I went to the doctors to collect the letter. So, yeah, basically, I'd say taxi walking really is the what the main thing. But I don't, I don't travel really. I just outside of walking my little my little penguin here. That's about it. Um, Kate asks me. You often talk about the park where you walk Vinny. I've seen some videos of him there as well. But when I try to imagine it, while falling asleep, my vision of the park changes. Is it big or a parkette? Does it have a community all around it or is it in a rural setting? Are the trees mature or newly planted? I guess my short question would be, could you describe the park for me? No. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, 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 I mean, this whole area is rural. R is rural? Rural, what's rural mean? Don't sound right now, I'm saying the word rural. Rural. It's in, a, it's in the countryside, is that rural? So, no, is it rural that, I can't, it doesn't sound right, rural, 
the more I say it, the harder it is to say. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. It's too many R's together. Rural. 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 Roger, Roger, rural, <laughs> Ru- I can't say rural, 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 how weird, I've never tried to say that word before, I know what it, well, obviously I don't know what it means, but, it, so, the thing about this country, if you're not from here, everything is surrounded by fields, Everything. It sometimes feels like we're not, especially if you live in a a, a large town or a city or something, and, and, you know, there's not a tree to be seen. But as soon as you, if you, like, bungee jumped up into the air, which would be weird, but, you know, let's say if you got in a hot air balloon and went up, if that's something that you feel we wanted to do, all you would start to see is fields and then little bits of space and then fields and more fields and more fields and trees and trees and and that's all this country is I don't say all it because that's obviously it's a really good thing but we are huge amounts of countryside surround, but with bits of ground where we're built on But I specifically live near the fields. So instead of being in a big massive area which is away from the fields, I'm right literally minutes away from the fields. The all the you know, where they grow crops and stuff like that. The park I go to there's actually two parks, but there's only in the park, one and there's another one around the corner. They kind of connect. They are connected, but it's sort of two different parks, or you could say three parts of the park. And there's there's some. You can see that they're quite new trees, but they're not. Uh, I'm quite. I don't know if it's fortunate, but I know people that have grew up here. So that park's been there the whole time that they grew up, and they're in their forties. So it's been there a long time. These buildings, I think, were built in the 70s. And the I've got, I got I know someone locally, and even when she was a little girl and then a teenager, she used to go into the park and they had the, it's like a, they used to call it, I don't think she called it, it's like a hump in the grass, like a grassy knoll or whatever. Is that, is that like a, a bump in the grass? Like a hill. But it's not a hill. It's a really large hill if you're like three inches tall. But, you know, it's... But when she was young, it felt like a big hill. And they, she used to meet all her friends and they'd have a name for the hill. But it's not really... <laughs> it's not a hill, trust me. It's, it's something you could just step up. It's an, it's an okay park. It's There's a pavement going there. Then there's another one going all the way down. It's it's an alright park. The, the lighting's not necessarily great. But then the street lighting is not great nowadays anyway. Because they turned it all down. So apart from the fact that it, it all comes off at 1 in the morning. So the time when you perhaps really need the street lights, and they might argue, well, less people are around, but that's possibly when you do need the street lights as for a safety perspective. And it's pitch black at night. One o'clock, it's done. You can't. All you can see, all you can rely on, is either the stars or the moon. Or the lights in people's houses, because some people have lights that come on when you park, walk past their house, or if you look in their window, and 
the only other time you can get a bit of light is if it's been snowing because it can be almost like daytime kind of at night when there's snow on the ground it's amazing it's just like wow so i think um it's, it's an okay park i've been i've been here for nearly 10 years now It'll be 10 years in april and i'm used to it and I've made use of it by taking Vinny out. And then we'll see Andre before that as well. He likes that park. He loves that park. But that's 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 what he's used to going to. He's got his favourite places to poo. And to do wee-wees. He's got, you know, he's got his favourite places to sniff around. And there's places he likes to eat grass because he's a cow for some reason. A little cow. So there's one area. So if you go in, there's in like a little, I wouldn't say alleyway, but a little pathway that leads. There's one, the amount of pathways that lead to the park. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, at least ten pathways lead to the park in the whole kind of around it at least ten so it's you get people coming from all different angles people with their dogs and Vinny's got quite a few friends that he says hello to and he I can't let him off the lead anymore because he's because he doesn't listen to a single word I say. So I guess it's, I don't know what a parquet is. Maybe a parquet. It's not a big park. But I think it would seem a lot bigger if it was all one bit of land. Because it's broken up. Because it's, because it's a housing estate. This whole area that I'm in. I'm living on the council part of the housing estate. But because it was a housing estate, they put in bits of greenery and they built around that area so that the, the park's been there as long as the houses have been here and the other part of the greenery as well, so that's green. It's, yeah. So it's it kind of, they've built the houses around and they purposely made it into that shape. And it's been like that for probably 50 years or so. Because apparently this, this estate, well not this estate, but the original version of this was further up the road where the motorway was. And in the, I don't know if it was the 50s or the 60s or maybe the 70s, they built the motorway through. They extended the motorway and went all the way through the village, which this is technically a village. And they lost, I think, about half the village. So they started to build on land further up to replace. So they put, they moved the school and the residents, I guess, people that were council and stuff. So, yeah. It's weird. There's even like an old building that was where the school used to be. Where the the motorway goes through. Hmm. So it is... So it's, it's kind of... So it's a communal park. It's near the school. There is like a little playground on there as well. Like a play area rather. With like fences and stuff around. For little kids. Um, other than that. It's surrounded by houses. But most of the houses. It's their backyards. There's a back. The back garden. With the fence. There's fences that sort of. Lead onto it. If that makes sense. Blimey. There's, no, there's 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten or eleven entrances to the park. So, to me, it doesn't feel like a park in the sense of like a really big area. Because I've been to, I've, you know, I've, I've been to a few parks over the years, lived in a few places, and it's not that kind of size of. It's not big enough to like play football. I mean, kids do play football and stuff, but it's not. It's not big enough for that. Not really. You couldn't have an actual football match, but a lot of a lot of parks, sometimes they're big enough to hold like two different football matches at the same time, which are quite a few parks are used for. Uh, Saturday football and stuff, but th this isn't the way it's put together. Is it's not really suitable for that at all. Because there's a, there's a path going right the way in the middle of the grass. Not in the grass, but like separating the grass. If there wasn't that, then it'd be a bigger area. If there wasn't the the kids playing area and they got rid of the paths, then it would be a much larger. It, might, it would sit and get rid of the houses as well. Get rid of all the houses. The, the, park, the park would be much bigger, much better. Yeah, I don't know if I described it. It's, there were some trees. You can obviously they've been there a long time now, but I can kind of see that they've they were new. Like I've lived on a council estates where, or housing estates even, where the trees have literally just been planted, and I've seen them grow over. I mean, outside my nan's place, those trees that were planted when we moved in when I was seven. And then I was still visiting that house when I was 35, 37 maybe, yeah. So 30 years later, I was still going there and the trees were huge. But I remember when they were, when they were being, not planted, but I remember when they were there, when they were tiny and they had those little like metal, uh, I don't know what you call them, protectors to keep them, you know, upright and stuff. And now they're big enough, they're just like bigger than the houses. And I can see that some of the trees in the park, it's almost like because of where they are, they're on their own, like one tree on its own in the middle of the grass, which again prevents people from doing things like playing football. You know, it's because it's it it's all because it's not big enough. So they've they've clearly planted trees, and I mean, unless the tree was already there, that's possible, I suppose. Yeah, it's possible. But to me, it looks like they've planted the trees in certain areas. And they've probably been there since they were tiny. And now they're huge trees. I don't know if that really, really uh, described it to you. I don't know. Maybe I'll make a video one day if it's not. I might make a video of it, yeah, make it do a video, or do a podcast while walking around and just describe in detail everything, perhaps. And lastly, 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 so thanks everyone for the questions so far, Brittany asks me, what was your favourite series that you binge watched on Netflix, Prime, etc, and secondly, do you have a do-over? What profession would you have pursued? Okay. Um, oh, oh. Um, if I could do over, what would I do? What profession? Um. Hmm. 
Hmm. That's a good question. I'm not sure. It depends. That that would be a different answer probably every day. Because every now and then I think, oh, wish I'd done that. Wish I'd maybe took a bit more notice, a bit more notice of what was going on when I was at school. Got some qualifications, and there's been times when I thought, you know, perhaps I could have been a doctor. Maybe that, maybe I was intelligent enough to to do something like being a paramedic, which is kind of like one of the most amazing jobs in the world. You know, there's so, but. Based in knowing what I'm like, regardless of education or literacy or anything like that, unlikely I'd have been able to handle those kinds of jobs. So, emotionally, I mean. So, I'd, I don't know, I think... I do sometimes wish that I'd gone more down the put a bit more effort into the entertainment side of things because I did some extra work once and I liked it and I thought you know I'd like I could have done more of that and I did comedy for a while and I had opportunities I didn't take them so maybe doing something like that but when I look back on it the the most important thing to me is doing something meaningful and by meaningful I mean something that helps people to me, something that feels meaningful to me but then you know stand up comedians they help people they get people make people laugh uh, musicians but your entertainment, it helps people. It just, it's maybe not valued in the same way. Uh, I don't know. But I'm not sure really if a do over. I think very first off, when I left school, the, the, the one thing I should have kept doing was the karate. But I was kind of put into a position where suddenly the family broke up and I had to, I felt pressured to get a job. I was still only 15, I'd left school, or was just about to leave school and there was no breathing room, there was no breathing space for me. I was suddenly like, I just, I didn't know what to do. And I ended up getting a job. The first job I could find. Literally the very first job. And. It was the lowest paid job I could have got. And I was living in a place. Full of jobs. Which would have been. Better paid. And more. I don't know. More career. Potentially career based. Because I lived not near a docks really big docks so there's lots of shipping offices and I could have become I could have become a lorry driver if I wanted to I could have worked in retail I could have worked in and there was another big town nearby so I could have worked in insurance I could have done any of that stuff I could have gone to college and learned to become well I did go to college but you know, so there's lots of things, but I think if I could do it and I over, do it over, what I probably would have done is when I was 14, I would have said to my uncle, if I could go back and say to my uncle that lived in Dover, can I have a job with you when I leave school? And if he said no, I'd have just begged him. <laughs> and then, because he owned a shipping company. So even if it was just 
riding around on a moped delivering parcels and stuff. Like being a, what did they used to call it? A shooter? Not a shooter, a delivery. Uh, there was a name, there was a name that it was called. And it was bas- basically young people that just left school and they'd have mopeds at the age of 16. And they would just deliver packages between the offices uh, on the docks. Oh, blimey. There's a name. There was a name for it. I don't even know if that still exists with the internet and that. I don't know. You know, ever since the internet recently started. (laughs) And I'm not 100% sure. What was he called? Rider, Rhoda, Boda, Bida. Uh, I know my brother used to do it. Yeah. Oh, there was a name for it. I never did it anyway. But that would have been something that I wish I'd done. Spoke to my, my uncle and just said, please, can I come work for you when I leave school? And just take the lowest job and maybe work up to doing something and being good at something. And also joining the local karate club in Dover or Kent or wherever it was. And continuing my doing the karate. Because you never know, he might have let me stay in his house. I doubt it, but you never know. It might have done. And uh, and he was my favourite uncle. So he was so cool. And I think it would have... Being around him would have transformed me. Would have given me the correct attitude. Because he's a very positive person. And very likeable, very nice person as well. He still is. I haven't seen him since I was six, 15, 16. So, yeah. Hmm. So the do-over, there's lots of different versions of that do-over for me. When it comes to jobs. Hmm. I mean, it's part of me, when I was working in the bakery, the second bakery, I would have stayed there. instead of but then there was a reason why I left well, I didn't leave I took off I went AWOL for about a week and then I came back to a no job but had I I could probably have talked myself back in because they did like me the management seemed to like me so I, I might have been able to talk my way in but anyway I didn't and that could have been an opportunity to get an actual to get promoted to being a supervisor and then to being like a manager or something which would have been a well paid job because it was one of the biggest bakeries in the country actually I think especially in London anyway but that didn't happen so that's I mean but I'm just going into regrets now aren't I really I suppose but it's just alternative, alternative, you know, alternate ways of living. And although it probably would have improved parts of my life, I might, where would I be now? I might be in a really good position. I might not be. It's just, there's no way of knowing. Therefore, not that I've got any choice in the matter, but I'll just stick with what happened. But yeah, I'd, there's a lots of different versions. I'd like to have, in some ways, done everything, but I don't really want to feel that way, though. I don't want to feel full of regret. I have... When I think about situations, I do like, oh, 
if I'd done, I wish I'd done things a little bit differently or a lot differently. But ultimately, it it's done now. You know, whether it's relationships, friendships, jobs, finances, I've I've learned a lot about myself over the years, and you know, if I was going to do it over again, I'd I'd definitely try and do things better. Mm, it's a weird one, yeah. I think giving up the martial arts or you know doing karate and stuff, although I did go back to martial arts in later life, it, yeah, that was a shame because getting a black belt would have meant, it would have changed my life. Getting a black belt is a huge deal and it's an accomplishment. And the, the one thing it would have given me, I think, was confidence that I never really had. I don't think I've ever really had a huge amount of confidence ever. But I think having had a black, having got a black belt, especially I'd have probably got a black belt by the time I was 18. I'd have just been in a different mindset. There'd have been a confidence in me that would have shown, that would have shone through. And I think that would have affected all aspects of my life going forward, including relationships, friendships, female relationships, uh, maybe relationships with my family, jobs. I'd have just perhaps had a better a better state of mind a better level of well not just confidence but hmm maybe it would have given me the life skills some of the life skills that I required that was needed You know, that determination. Because you can't get a black belt easily. You have to work so hard to get there. So maybe if I'd done that, I'd have realised that hard work does pay off. Because I never learned that in my entire life. Hard work never paid off for me. Not really. I mean, you, some would argue I've worked hard on this. I've just worked long on it. It's been a long time, not necessarily a hard time. I'm just talking. It's not that hard really, is it? But but I have worked hard in the past, but it never showed. I never got anything out of it. I've done long hours in different jobs, never had anything to show for it. So I think if I'd have done something which showed maybe the degree I had something to show for it at the end of that, but I think to have a black belt as a teenager, that would have set me up on, yeah, in the right direction. I, I, I think so. So that that's one of my things that I would change so probably the very first job I had all the jobs I had previous to that like part time I'd leave that the same I'm happy with what happened there so part time jobs whether it was working in uh, like this the, what's it you know, delivering papers delivering leaflets uh, or whether it was working in a bakery in a, the restaurant or washing up, all those things. That was cool. I'm I'm happy with that. But when I actually left school, that's when it kind of it went a bit downhill. <laughs> I 
I mean, I'd have been better off just going and working in the restaurant that I used to work. I'd have got paid more. Or maybe I wouldn't, I don't know. Yeah, I probably would have got paid more. Not a lot more, but I would have got paid more. Just for washing up every day. Blimey. So, next, what is your favourite series that have been watched on Netflix Prime? I'm going to go for recently, because I've done a lot of binge-watching over the years. My recent one was... Last Man on Earth. It was four seasons. It was on... Was it on Disney? Yeah, because I got Disney because I, I wanted to watch something on Disney. I'm not with them now. But it was on Disney, I think. So I watched that. Four seasons of that. Other than that... Um, the problem with... Because do you remember there was a time... There was a time where pretty much all the shows that were streamed, you'd get the entire season released. And then they started dropping them once a week or letting you have two and then releasing them once a week, like television. And for me, the whole, well, one of the main good things about streaming and box sets for example is it's not television there's no adverts and there's no waiting if I want to watch six episodes back to back then I can if I want to watch let's say there might be a, se a season that's got eight episodes and I can watch them all in one day if I choose to do that if, I, you know, if I'm able to. Not over eight weeks. Because I lose interest sometimes. Just. It's. The. And it's not. It's not even a lack of. Concentration. It's a lack. It's a lack of enthusiasm. Sometimes. Because if there's something on. And it. It's really exciting. Or lack of interest, yeah. If it's really exciting, I know, like, I want to watch the next episode. Or I think I'll treat myself to a wee-wee or a poo. And then I'll then I'll come back and watch the next episode. Or maybe I'll take Vinny for a, a thingy. I'm not say the word in case he's listening. His eyes, ears did prick up when I said Vinny. And then I'll come back and I'll look forward to it. Or maybe I'll watch it tomorrow. But I look forward to watching it and I'm thinking, oh good, I watched the next episode of, I'm trying to think as an example, so, so I'm watching From at the moment, which is like a horror thing, but so I'm watching the third season of that and I'm on episode one. And I didn't get to watch all of it, I got a phone call. And then I had to go out, I'd take him out or whatever, and I woke up this morning and I was thinking, oh, I need to watch that again, because I remembered what happened, and I'm like, I wonder what's, because I was interested. If I had to wait a week, that interest would wade, wade, wane, reduce, whatever that means. Yeah, those days are gone. Waiting for a week. I don't want to do that anymore. And unfortunately, the streaming seems to have done that more often than it used to. And I don't really know why. I mean, there's sure there's, it's a financial reason. And I think the reason why is because they want people to stay subscribed. They don't want people just to subscribe for a month and then unsubscribe and watch a whole season of shows you know so let's say there's 10 se 10 episodes to a show or 12 episodes to a season if they stay and watch every episode they're there for three months because it's 12 weeks 
but if they want to watch it all, then they might they might just get a free subscription for one week and watch the entire season and then unsubscribe before they have to pay anything. So I guess maybe it's like that. You can't do that if you're going to watch, if it's every week, if it's drip feeding you. It's it's all about money, isn't it, ultimately? They're, they're not doing it for fun. They're doing it to make money. So I, I guess that makes sense. I'm just not a big fan of that that way of doing things, personally. I like to be able to just watch everything I want. Outside that, what was my favourite? If I go through my favourite ever shows, I go through periods, though, a recent... I mean, on Netflix. Oh, wow. And there's a few shows I watched before. So if I go to just the ones that I streamed, not the ones that I used to watch on TV or on box sets, I would say Boardwalk Empire, Breaking Bad, Orange is a New Black. I used to love that, but I stopped watching it. Again, if it, I'm better off, or I prefer it if the show's finished. But then, you know, if, if all seasons are complete, then I like, I'll watch every episode of the entire thing. I did that with Modern Family, watched every episode back to back. It took a while. I did that with Frasier as well. Although I'd watched Frasier originally when it was on. I did it with Cheers. Although again, I'd watched Cheers originally when it was on. I'm trying to think what else I did it with. I'd done it with a few shows. True Blood was another one. I love True Blood. I don't even remember where I watched that. Was it was that Netflix? I don't remember. I think it was HBO, so that would have been probably Sky. And I used to watch Dexter, but then I stopped. I. There's quite a few, I'll be on it. It's like Lost. Lost is probably the one that I loved Lost. Carnival Row, that's another one. That was an HBO show. I think it's Carnival Row, but that was great. If you've never seen it, it's weird, but really good. And there was another one with, oh, what's his name? It was a Western. This is quite a few years ago. Really adult, but really good. Ian McShane was in it, and it turned him into a a much bigger star than he previously was, because he was a baddie in that, and he was so good. Ian McShane, yeah. I forget the name of the show. It was a, a Western. But, yeah, that's good. What other ones? Carnival Row. Boardwalk Empire. Said that one already. I can't think of any others. There's a few. There's a few. I just, I like to... The only problem though, if I wait until all the seasons are completed... Then the show's old. Because sometimes it's, there might be 12 seasons. Nine, and that's a little bit too much. It's not so much if it's a sitcom. Or not eight or nine seasons if it's a sitcom. Because it's like half hour or 20 minute shows. Half hour shows. But if it's like an hour 
each. That's a lot of episodes. End up being like, blimey, 100 hours or something. But there's some of the old shows I really liked. ER. But I used to like St. Elsewhere. And Hill Street Blues when it was on TV. Did you do? Did you do a fart? You did. Did you did you do a bottom fart? Did you do a bottom burp? Yeah, Hill Street Blues. I used to love that. Uh, I fall asleep myself. I used to love watching Mash as well. That was another one. Finny's staring at me, which means I need to stop the recording. I don't know how long I talked for. Probably a, an hour or so. So I think I've answered most of the questions. As far as the different shows, it's been so many, so many. I'd, I'd, I'd literally have to make a list of the shows that I've watched and loved. Yeah, it's the one thing that I've, for, for many years, I love TV. I'm not a big fan of TV itself anymore. Like the way television is and stuff. It I'm not I'm not I'm not anti reality shows. But it got a little bit silly. I mean it's the the reality shows have now been going for twenty nearly twenty five years or whatever. It was a fad. And I remember when it started because it was like Big Brother was the one of the first and then it built upon that and then they had the music shows with that was kind of like a reality show as well wasn't it and then things shipped wrecked and it it's still going after all those years and uh, what is it the only way is Essex Geordie Shaw the Kardashians What's the one on a boat? There's one in a restaurant. There's the fashion ones. There's a trans ones. There's all kinds of what? What's the name? Uh, I don't watch it. I just forget a name. So there's lots of different ones, and I still can't work out why MTV is called MTV. I know why it used to be called MTV, music television, a place where you could watch videos, music videos, which is a really good thing to have. It's like a really good thing to have, but yeah, gone. It's still it's still MTV, but it's not. It's not MTV, is it? It's just reality shows mainly. I mean, they, I think they still have Saturday Night Live on there, I do believe. And maybe some talk shows, but the amount of reality shows that's on there is just... That's not what it was. I guess there's no money having videos, showing music videos anymore. It's a shame. Because I never, I never had my MTV. I had it briefly when I was in Ireland... They had they had Sky I think or satellite so MTV was on there so I used to watch that sometimes and in the late nineties I used to watch it sometimes in a house because they had Sky if they weren't around I'd watch some MTV I just watched all the latest videos and some of the old videos as well it was just good but yeah no more. Couldn't believe it. I went. I went on to MTV because so I think I got MTV a chance to watch it for the first time in years, and I turned it on thinking, "Yeah, I'll just chill out, watch some videos, some uh, you know music videos." Uh -uh. Nope. Well, that's it for me. <laughs> Ooh, woo! Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Thank you for the questions as well. Remember to be kind to yourself and be gentle with yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love.
Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here. Not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace, but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice. Maybe in a few hours time. Perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again, like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again. And it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me. Just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And 
and I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now and as you become aware of your hands I'm also aware of how 
relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally you 
breathe so very easily and smoothly. my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free.
Notice in that. Your mind. Has slowed down. Slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly, but surely, the muscles in your legs feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders, Deepen in each part of your body, further and deeper. No 
noticing the feelings in the back of your neck. feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. Peaceful. Deeply. There's a sense of peace. spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. So very slow. stomach, peaceful in your stomach. back, notice 
Jesus. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. All the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go.
vorstellen. Mind. Just wandering away. to let go, let go, completely let go, So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety.
Cinco. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Drifting. to breathe so much easier
have noticed. Your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace. Drifting. Total peace. Go. body
body feels almost invisible. you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body and your mind starts to slow down and that could be almost in recognition of I guess my speech not being particularly fast and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy, which then fills your body up. And your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling, positive healing. An energy that spreads through your body like a wave 
of comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing And as I move down your body, starting at your head, the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply. And those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically Release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, 
just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing, calm and loose. As you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more. in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Relaxed and loose and calm. And now the back of your neck, focus in on the back of your neck, letting go any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back, down to your lower back. As you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back, 
as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser the muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting and in your lower back there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort that spreads into your hips so down your lower back and into your hips into the area where your coccyx are and into your buttocks and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area start to melt start to really let go and you're nowhere about to focus on your shoulders your back and your spine Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already Feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. And that feeling. Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. The feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders which sends that deep healing mess 
message. Into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So, so calm. spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread Forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time, so light and gentle. Now on your hands, sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar
tips. attention to the front of your body, so comfortable, muscles in your thighs, your knees, so relaxed. Muscles and your shins completely
I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1. You can imagine, in a way, it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Eighteen. Seventeen.
sustain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
six.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down, and you may find do is just drift off to sleep, and if that's what you want, then just allow yourself to do that. Now, focus in on your eyes going to begin counting down from ten down to one, right now, ten,
Whoa. So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, and you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and attention falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focus in on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. 
and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem, sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of acknowledgement. A thank you. Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I sure that I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something? Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise, I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, gain such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally, if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realize how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, on the bottoms of your legs, the shins, 
and the calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. It's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us supports our body for a lifetime Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. Okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. There to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy. Because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. It's all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course, it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. doing the same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles in the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly your knees, your calves your ankles the strength of your ankles considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs especially your thighs yet they're so strong so flexible absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you supporting all that weight regardless of how what weight you are even if you're only eight stone still a lot of weight for these little ankles now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone double that yet my ankles support my body all the time although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down as a in fact my whole legs do my feet my feet also go and my toes clap I'm so happy legs really are amazing and I know the talk about, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect. They deserve to relax deeply. deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. It's almost as if the muscles are just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax, and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is a tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each 
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. Completely. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. Six. slowed right down sink in deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you make no 
notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. Just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more with number seven.
Imagine now, notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands and your fingers, there's nothing needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that, it's just noticing and focusing on your Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands Thank you.
starting with number eight. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. Generally thinking about stuff. 
we take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now. We're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever. A place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways more importantly, you can like yourself. Appreciate who you are. sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body. And that healing energy spreads through your veins, traveling to each and every single part of your body. start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have 
the effect that they used to. Because something's changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to even stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA, and sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. very, very easy to let go, because 
because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions. such an amazing effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you. Continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower, it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. 
と、and that negativity would disappear. As you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected, you can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You. Are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just. Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing. Is spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned. It's barred. It's not allowed entry. Doesn't doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here. Doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. Makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just to let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number, you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. Seven, 
This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with how you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected. We expect when we listen to our voice to feel more relaxed naturally. Be 
like is when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. filled with that healing energy, the feeling of comfort, of relaxation, increases. starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it's not needed, and it may start If you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also what will happen. Because by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give 
attention to body and mind. In fact, you give the command to your body and your mind to relax deeper and deeper and to drift off to sleep. I focus on the different parts of your body, you may start to just drift, and when you come back again, and you hear me talking, and I'm focusing on a different part of your body. yourself drifting, but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting, and you get you alert again to my voice focusing on a different part of your body that starts to relax even deeper, because that drifting Basically, you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues into sleep. the last you remember 
Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Focusing on your fingers, maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. focus on both of your hands now, and then they seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? Almost as if Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows.
body feels. Noticing how your mind feels now. go of everything letting go go of everything everything I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported, and you feel comfortable, and the breathing is really easy, and you feel, you feel confident in how you look as well, so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session so none of that stuff matters whatsoever this is about you this is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, and move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face just so you can feel my hands so you can become accustomed to them and now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down to the back of your neck you can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with 
just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin get accustomed to it realize that you're safe and it's all good it's all fine and I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck both hands now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently moving from the bottom of your neck which would be sort of near where your shoulders start I guess all the way up to your jaw your ears kind of area that side of your neck of course is a lot longer than the front of your neck Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is and just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them all the time being firm yet gentle with you and just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders moving to the muscles of your shoulders And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table. 
just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. You can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. down your arms you do one arm at a time starting with your right arm and what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up just hold it to the side of you I want it to still be attached and I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, 
because he's intimate. You can feel nice. You can feel safe. As I put that right arm back down where it was, you do the same with your left arm, exactly the same, massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently, massaging the palm of your left hand, and it feels so So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where we would be at B, that area at the top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving down. a downward stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against, almost the part that connects your front to your back, and just massaging down firmly but gently as firm as you want, moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle and yet firm as you choose. And eventually you get to the spine you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. You can do that a few times. Sometimes people use the knuckle or the 
you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine, almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine, each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated and now I'm going to move to one side to your right side and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, we're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently, and massage and push from one end, that side all the way to my side, up to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really be there, you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged, it releases so much from your body that's not useful, starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. Move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back, kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. And it feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to your top of your body. And I'm going to do the same, this time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up 
to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from the chest. So it's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue at the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. as gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from Pretty much underneath your arm area, really. To your spine. And then continuing that all the way down, including your lower, your middle of your back. Go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands Fingers digging deep. To your ankles. And the back of your, back of your ankles. Just gently massage in that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet. sides of your feet, gently but firm enough so they don't tickle, and just allow the pleasure
pleasure do you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you as I continue to massage your feet the bottoms of your feet your sides your arches your heel you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle Stretching your toes gently, massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. And this is an area that Maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted, I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down. muscles massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently moving from down your ankle into your feet massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged, feels really Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again with your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As we move up, I can clean my hands, make them all fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently. Starting off with your forehead, your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down 
your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck. moving down from your neck down to your chest starting by massaging the very top of your chest where the collarbone is either side of the collarbone Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. It feels quite a large area as you move from one side to the next. where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process, moving up over your chest, Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention. It feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, and just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button Round 
onto the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free, and there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part, because you do have a tendency of holding different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. So now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around the belly button. gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. And as I now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles, massaging them, I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down Massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. Moving down to your knees, gently massaging the knees. Sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin. Gently, softly, but firmly. Moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot and each hand. Just gently massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes, massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let go and enjoy process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin, and you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling Massaged by me. Enjoy feeling deeply relaxed. do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. And 
I'm going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. Each time I say a number, you can imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow. Just a gentle and that candle will extinguish. And then I'll say the next number and we'll move down. And you can just blow that one out. yourself feeling more and more relaxed. If you need to sleep, you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more sounds where you are, you be aware of those sounds for the moment, and you may start to just not even notice them. they're unimportant. Where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds, there's a forest, the pigeon that likes to say hello sometimes, and there's the odd plane that goes by. seems important whatsoever. The more candles you blow out, the less important anything is. Seem to ignore. 
energy. So simple. Now we're going to start by introducing the first. Positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting.
Sie ein.
Ooh. Candle. 
those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind. And your mind starts to slow down. It's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. It kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, and you give the say so, you can say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely. body just follows. It's all like, like a breath of relief. Oh, you don't have to now relax. That feeling at the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past where you get home and you just sit down in a chair. Maybe you kick your shoes off and that feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least. And if you choose, you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two. And it feels blissful. And just by sitting now like that, your body knows it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset. And your mind will prepare to let go of everything. And to just completely allow all the stress of your body to evaporate and the tensions can just 
just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and it seem almost alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. Is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. It's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of the clock just unwinding. You know, it's almost like you can see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you'd use to wind it up. All the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, deeper. You can even know find you can even relax. You feel that your mind starts to wander. Maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere listening to me again. And it was just your mind drifting to sleep. Which is quite natural. Because sometimes when you're stressed and tense, we not may not actually be aware of what we mean. What we physically or emotionally body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all let them go, allow them to drop into the floor. feels so nice. 
everything out and then access with my own attention and stress in every part of the body and mind and as you start to focus on the mind may you be and notice that things are come to a standstill between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind let you know they are truly completely calm loose and relaxed it really is body and the mind and the life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones
this ever increasing sensation of comfort that is spreading throughout your body. scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from the discomfort or stress or tension but just accepting observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment, to yourself. 
starts off by focusing on the hands. Just be aware of the hands. I'd like you to move your hands around, just maybe move your fingers a little bit. gently, just so that you can be in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning on your ankles, moving your feet around, and then you can return. moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes changes in your eyes when you do close them, maybe raising your eyebrows as it stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing on your thighs. Ask you to gently tense your thighs just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation. of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. Noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Moving your focus Noticing the back of the neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, and just lead to your shoulders, and as you focus slowly on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards if you're looking up, just maybe moving your head down 
the sensations of physical sensations of how I feel in my neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of the arms. on those parts, the tops of the arms, and now work it as tensely, but very, very gently and slowly, so we're not straining or putting any pressure whatsoever. Thing to 
series of some million bright years, depending where you refer to physics. The science of objects. We are physically able to do so.
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretched a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. make up the larger movements, which is always the case, and when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And This space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations pleasurable or not. You may be resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral, just feelings. concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you feelings in your arms instead of feeling the whole of the arm maybe notice those individual feelings and those different muscles and the skin the hairs of your arms the maybe the internal parts of your arms the veins Just 
being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain fever maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation forearm on your right arm, your right forearm, there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just fever, like it's there, the feelings in your shoulders, perhaps your shoulders when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling, almost like your, both of your shoulders are just one thing, all still one. Focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder. Maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, like you tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Recall set connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. Sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, and I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently. seem to happen, the feeling of very gently stretching your lower back. chest, just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now.
so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in the chest. And of course if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, well mine aren't that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is in your chest. So I notice that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my my back, my upper back. Guess the obvious reason would be because you know I'm breathing. But yeah, when it stretches my chest and my back at the same time, then it feels it feels okay. bit of pain in my right chest, a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, I don't know, I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason, that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas back. It feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just various muscles in your body don't you in order to get more of a sense of how they feel and when you're relaxing and you do tense a muscle and then you let it go it relaxes way more than it would normally. So you have to bring the anger to do that. And if you ain't doing it, 
case where uh, when she gave her parents my rebuttal she needed to be gentle with herself to smile how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording Peaceful is your mind right now? There's nothing to think about. It's just my voice to listen to. Because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slowly down. As your body body maybe calm your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to leaving them now. Kind of like a, an escape pod, a spaceship movie, a space movie, you know, when you get a certain little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away.